Hi. Now in an earlier tutorial I showed you how to draw up a probability tree diagram. If you're unfamiliar with this just go back on the site and have a look at how to draw probability tree diagrams. But what I want to do in this one is now show you how we can combine probabilities to work out probabilities of particular events. Now we're going back to the example a bag contains five red sweets and three blue sweets where we take two sweets out at random with replacement. And if you drew up a tree diagram for that just briefly for your first sweet you would have two outcomes. You could either get a red sweet or a blue sweet. Probability of a red sweet was five out of eight and that left you with the probability of a blue sweet was 3 out of a total of 8. But because we put the sweet back in the bag then we could take out a red or blue again with the same probabilities. All right? And so we constructed a tree diagram like this. But now we're going to be asked questions like find the probability of getting two red sweets. A red sweet followed by another red sweet. Well if we're asked to do something like that what we need to do is take this probability of 5 eighths and multiply it by the next probability along the branch. So the probability of taking two reds often written P bracket 2R or you could write it as R comma R something like that would do. What you need to do then is you do 5 eighths this probability times this probability here. And 5 eighths times 5 eighths gives us a total of 25 over 64. If they had asked us to work out the probability of two blues then the probability of two blues, let's just write 2b, would be to do 3 eighths times 3 eighths. So 3 eighths times 3 eighths gives us a total of 9 over 64, 9 sixty-fourths. Now this is the answer to part 1 of our question, the probability of getting two reds. But when it comes on to part 2, the probability that they're the same colour, the sweets, okay, let's just draw a line down there. Then the probability of getting two the same colour, how can we achieve it? Well, we could get two reds or we could get two blues. Now we have two events here. We have the event of getting two reds or we have the event of getting two blues. And we call these events mutually exclusive. They can't happen at the same time. If you're picking out two sweets you can't get two reds and two blues at the same time. You'll either get two reds or you'll get two blues. Or you might get actually a red and a blue or a blue and a red. But as far as these events are concerned, getting two reds or two blues, they're mutually exclusive. And when you have mutually exclusive events given by the OR, we add the probabilities together. So for this example, what we're going to have is two reds, which we know is 5 eighths times 5 eighths, as we move along the branch here. Probability of two blues is going to be 3 eighths times 3 eighths. We add them together because they're mutually exclusive. 25 over 64 plus 9 over 64. That's going to give us a total of 34 over 64. All right, And that's part two. So it's important to realize then that for mutually exclusive events we just add them together. Now for part three we've got to have at least one red sweet. And how can we get one red sweet? At least one red sweet. Well, let's just put it up here. Let's have an intro. The probability of at least one red sweet, one R. How can we achieve that? Well, we could have the probability of 
two reds, for instance. Or we could have the probability of, say, a red and then a blue. I'm going to write that R comma B. Or you could have the probability of getting a blue first and then a red. But certainly not the two blues. So when it comes to working out two reds, well we've done that already, what about the probability of a red followed by a blue? That would be red followed by a blue down here. Let's just mark it in, probability of red followed by blue, R comma B. It's going to be 5 eighths times 3 eighths. And that gives us 15 over 64. And for a blue followed by a red, well, that's going to be 3 eighths times 5 eighths. Let's just mark it in. A blue followed by a red. 3 eighths times 5 eighths. And that too comes to 15 over 64. So when it comes to doing this sum, our OR becomes adding. So we've got two reds, 25 over 64, plus the red followed by blue, 15 over 64, or, so we have the plus, a blue followed by a red, which was also 15 over 64. And if you add that up, you end up with 55 out of 64. Now it just so happens that there's a better way of doing this at least problem. When we look at all the possible events that we can have, okay, two reds, a red and a blue, a blue and a red, or two blues, if we were to total up all these probabilities, you'd always find that it comes to one. If you add those up, you get a total of 64 out of 64. That comes to one whole one. So there's another way then of doing this at least one red. Remember, we added up just these three here. If we know that they all come to one, then we might as well have done the probability of at least one red. We could have done it as one whole one, take away the probability that you just get two blues. So that sum would have been one, take away the two blues, nine sixty-fourths. So one whole one is 64 64 take away 9 64 gives us 55 64 The same answer, obviously, as we had here. So this, in my opinion, is a better way of doing a question like this. But I leave it up to you. You decide whatever you want. Now not only do we have tree diagrams like this one, our probabilities here were independent. We had independent events. This was independent of this result here, unaffected. That's because we put the sweet back in the bag. So we have what is often called independent events. Okay? Now what I'd like to show you is another example only with conditional probabilities in. The methods don't really change. All I'm doing is just changing the notation. Look, I'll show you. So here it is. We've got the bag again with five red sweets and three blue sweets. We take two sweets out again, but this time without the placement. So we have what is called conditional probabilities. Okay? This, remember, was the probability of a red given that I previously taken a red. And that probability is going to change. It's dependent on what happened before. If we took a red sweet out of the bag, we're down to seven sweets. Four of them are red because we just took a red sweet out. So we have a probability of four sevenths. This one, the probability of blue, given that I've taken a red. We're down to seven sweets, but there were three blue sweets in the bag at that stage. So we've got a probability of B given R is 3 sevenths. 
You can check out these results, but again we did a tree diagram like this in an earlier video, so just check it out if you're unsure. Now, when it comes to working out the probability of different colours, the rules don't change. Whatever your tree diagram you've got, if you go along the branches, you multiply. If something involves more than one set of branches, then you add. So for the probability of different colours, how can we get different colours? Well, it must obviously be the probability of getting a red followed by a blue or the probability of a blue followed by a red. And we've seen that to get a red and a blue, we're going along these branches here, we multiply the probabilities. So that's going to be 5 eighths times 3 sevenths. Probability of a blue followed by a red, okay, is going to be 3 eighths times 5 sevenths. 3 eighths times 5 sevenths. Now these two events are mutually exclusive because they can't happen at the same time. You'll either have this happening or you'll have that happening. So the or, remember, is a plus. And so if you work this out, you've got 15 over 56 plus another 15 over 56, a total of 30 56, which I'll leave you to cancel if you wish. So we've got dependent probabilities here. These are conditional probabilities, but this probability depends on what happened before. But the rules don't change. Okay? Now I've got some further questions for you to try in later videos and they are a little bit more involved than what we've got here. So I really strongly encourage you to have a go at them just so that you get a feel for this type of question.